Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to talk about how we can use CARP to provide redundancy for our servers in our networks. So what we have here is I have one FreeBSD machine and this is going to be our main server and I have another machine off screen that is our backup server. Now, the only thing I've done to the server is your basic things. I've set a static IP, and in this case at least, I've configured a web server on this uh, machine. Now, it doesn't have to be a web server. It can be any kind of network server that you may need, but uh, CARP is going to work at layer 3, and then it shares the IP between these two machines. So when we're done it will look like the machine is always on and whatever resources it has are always available regardless of what um, physically is going on underneath so let us log in real quick Whoops. and essentially we have our 192, 168.10.2 and this is the real IP address of this one machine. So, in other words, you can think of it as a management address of it. So, if we want to actually go in and manage this machine over the network or test content changes, we would be using this IP address. All right, so this is the management IP. And we, as I said, I have that server on there now. And all we have to do to set up CARP is first go to boot loader.conf and let's put in there carp underscore load equals and then in quotes put yes alright just like that um, do make sure your, your caps lock is on and after doing that because this is our main server we want to make sure it's always allowed to preempt any other carp speakers on the network so we want to go ahead and put in here net init carp preempt equals a uh, one. All right, and that allows it to preempt any other speakers. So with those two um, changes, now we want to go into Etsy rc.com, and now we need to set up the carp interface. Now, in FreeBSD, at least, you use aliases to do this. It's different than, like, OpenBSD. But we're going to do if config underscore em0, and then underscore alias 0. And then from here, that's where the carp config is. We want to specify IPv4 in this case. And right after this, we're going to say a group number. Now, if you have carp running on another machine in your network, maybe like a network firewall, you can have separate um, group um, groups of CARP and they won't interfere with one another. So you can do that if you want. Let's just say VHID of 10 here. Um, we're going to give this a password. Um, they do have to match. I'm going to put that on there. And now we're going to give it an IP of 192.168.10.4. This works the same way if they're public IP addresses as well. Um, either v4 or v6. Um, from there, we're going to do the a mask of slash 24. All right, from there, that is our configuration on the master machine. Let's save this. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and do kld load carp because we don't want to have to reboot. And we're going to do service net if restart. Now the difference is there's that alias IP. He's in group 10 because it's an instance of the CARP protocol now. And it's running in addition to that normal IP. And we're in the master state um, right this moment. So what we're going to do now is run over to a web browser and write these IPs down if you want. The 192.168.10.2 and the 192.168.10.4. We're going to make sure before we move on to the second one that both of those are reachable. I'll see you in a second. Alright, so now in our web browser here 
we're going to go to those two IP addresses. Now the only thing I've done um, is change if it says master or backup depending on what web server you're accessing at the, at the time. But um, in production, the content would be identical on both services. So we're going to go ahead and do 10.2 first. Let's go ahead and run that. And we're connected now to the master um, web server in this case. It could be a mail server, it could be DNS, doesn't matter. And let's do 10.4. And as you can see, we're connected to the master interface. So um, both of those work. And the reason 10.4 works now is because of the fact that CARP is allowing us to actually speak to that IP address on the network. So the first half of this is set up. We're going to go to our backup one and then make sure everything is working with that and make sure the failover works. Alright, so now we're over on the backup server and let's go ahead and log in to this over here. So now what we're going to do <coughs> is set up that same configuration. So right now we only have one IP address, 192.168.10.3 there. And again, that's the management IP, and it has the same characteristics that I've already talked about. Now we're going to go into bootloader.conf again. We want to load that carp module on boot. Okay, and that loads us up for us. We do not need to enable preempt on this machine, so we don't have to worry about putting in um, that into the sysctl.conf. But what we do have to do is go into etsyrc.conf. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and set up an alias. And um, the configuration of this one is going to vary a little bit, but um, very little. Now, the group for VHID, that's the Virtual Host Identifier in CARP, that is still going to be 10. They do have to match. If they don't match, you're not going to have the designation of master and backup, okay? So they do have to match, and the password has to match as well. Otherwise, you're not going to, it, it won't um, accept that it should peer with that CARP instance. It's just going to ignore the packets. Now, um, in CARP, the way that you can choose who you want to be master if they're up and available uh, on the network is with uh, the variable advertise SKU. If we set this to a higher value, so it goes from 0 to 255, if it's a higher value, this CARP instance is less preferred. If there's one that is actively speaking that is a lower value. So we're going to set this to higher than zero. Um, that's the default. We're going to say advertised skew of 100 because we want this to stay the backup unless the master fails. This could be for many reasons actually in physical configuration. Maybe that server is more powerful or has more RAM or maybe the switch it's connected to is 10 gig and your backup server is only 1 gig. It could be many things like that of, of why you may want to change this value. But um, that is 100, and it's important. So let me move that out of the way. It is important that you make sure that the virtual IP is the same, so it should still be 10.4. Okay, and the same slash 24. Now, with that, let's go ahead and save our file. And we should be able to do, first verify that we didn't load that yet. Let's go ahead and load the module. There we go. And now let's go ahead and restart our interfaces. Okay. So what do we see here? We have our management, and now we have that new CARP address that's because of the alias we put in. The VHID of it is 10, and right now, its current state is backup. And the reason that is, is because it's less preferred, because it has an advertised SKU of 100, and our uh, master one has an advertised SKU of 0. So, 
With this configuration, we're going to jump back over to our web browser real quick. And I'm going to also have the servers on screen so you can see that they have changed. All right, so now back in the web browser, we're going to go ahead and connect to 10.4 again, the virtual IP. And right now, it's the master IP address. But now what we're going to do is pull up the master server. And as you can see, let's filter that a little better. This server is the master, but there's multiple things we can do. Um, essentially, it doesn't matter if this was shut off for some reason, like a power failure, or you're doing maintenance or something. But um, how I'm going to do it to make a failure happen is just if config em0 down, and that's going to stop sending cart packets over the network at all. So now, if we connect to the 10.4, you see it says backup. Because now the web server we're accessing, along with the virtual IP, points to our backup web server because the CARP instance on our backup has now changed to the master state. All right, so even though he was less preferred, he is the last remaining member of VHID 10, so he's going to take over the master role. Meaning when we send an ARP request for this IP, we get the MAC address of this CARP speaker and send our frames over there. So then our connection ends up going to this one instead of the uh, backup one. So with that preempt, if we bring this machine back up, it will be able to take back over the role. And then what will happen is we just go up in the backup state again, um, waiting for another failure. So then if we go to 10.4 again, we go and we're at the first server. And um, as a, like what I said before, though, we can totally, this simulates power failure, um, cable cut, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as the other backup is, is still available, it will switch over. So, now we're switched back over to this backup machine. All because of CARP. And again, it doesn't matter what server's on top of this. Um, that's how this operates to provide layer 3 redundancy for us. So, with all that, I do hope this video was helpful and informative. And um, I, I do want to thank you for viewing. And as always, it's been Tyler with T-Tech. And have a very nice day.